we are here with Jose Torrent, who has been professor of soil science in the Department of Agronomy of the University of Córdoba until last year, when he retired and became emeritus professor. Torrent has devoted more than 40 years to research and education on soil science. Although I'm sure that you are still working on your research, today we are going to talk about uh, all those years that you have dedicated to, to your research and, and your career in general in, on soil science. So, at first, uh, could you tell us about your family background and heritage? Well, my father was born in a small village in the Spanish Pyrenees and he was the fourth uh, child of a family of cattle farmers. So, according to the local tradition, he had to, left, uh, to leave his home. He, le he left his home when he still was very young to earn his living elsewhere. So, he uh, uh, learned the trade of a mechanic and moved from one work to another until he ended up in Barcelona. There he met, met and married my mother. Uh, my mother came, uh, was born in Barcelona, but uh, uh, her father came from a small village not far from Barcelona where the typical crops were um, grapevine and, and olive, typical Mediterranean use of land. And uh, her mother came from a village 100 kilometers southeast of uh, South uh, East of Barcelona, where they had um, uh, um, usually uh, lots of uh, hazelnuts, hazelnut trees, almond trees, etc. So um, I he married, as I said, they married, and I was born just after the end of the World War II in September 1945. Uh, what about your family, uh, oh, sorry, uh, how was your life and your education as a child? Well, I, I, I live in a family that was economically modest but not poor. Uh, I went to primary school in a religious, um, primary, in a religious uh, school and then I went on to, for secondary education to a public, to a public school. I was a, well, a relatively good student. I was good at maths, chemistry, um, uh, geology, reasonably good at um, biology, uh, not so good at language, and quite helpless at uh, uh, philosophy, physics, and Latin. My translations of the, of the Gallic Wars were, were something out of this world, so it's, I was incapable of translating Latin so bad. At that time, we had Latin at the school, so... <laughs> then, uh, uh, after, after my secondary school, I, 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 went to, I went to study at university, I went to Madrid. Yeah, uh, you moved to Madrid to start studying agronomic engineering at the Higher Technical School of Agriculture Engineering of the Polytechnic University of Madrid. Uh, when did you decide to study agronomic and, and why? Uh, yeah, well, that's, this, this was not my first choice. When I was a child, I wanted to be a train driver. When I was eight or nine, I changed to chemist. Uh, in fact, I was good at mixing things at home. And, and a cousin of my father used to say that, that I was the experiments chap. So, uh, and uh, at the age of 11, 12, and 13, I was quite good at, pre at manufacturing different types of gunpowder, sometimes with unexpected results. Yeah, but uh, later, well, probably at the, uh, when I was at my second year of secondary school, I, I, I decided myself for, agriculture, for uh, chemical engineering. And only after, just after the... the the, the last the year of secondary education, I, I, I decided myself for agronomic engineering or agricultural engineering. Um, the reason was that in, in, in during, I was a city, a, city, a city boy. I was born and, and lived in Barcelona until I was 18. But, but my, I, I could go in summer, or I went in summer to the, to the farm run by my grandfather. So I could see how the country life was. I occasionally went to the, to the birthplaces of my, 
my my mother's uh, parents, so I could see almonds and hazelnuts and like sweet, any type of of uh, land uses. So that probably had much influence on my decision. So, uh, so I, I, I. But this was a very last uh, at the very last moment of the, my secondary education. Yes. Uh, after that, why and when did you decide to study or to focus on soil science? Well, um, well, first um, I, I went to Madrid. Well, first year of university, I went to the University of Barcelona. Then this, after that, I went to Madrid. Uh, because the, the, to get the degree, one needed seven years at that time. So it was a very long time. <laughs> so when I was in, I've been in Madrid for another two academic years. Um, I, I had the, well, I was fortunate to have as professor of soil science, Professor Cayetano Tamés, who had elaborated or had coordinated the, the production of a map of uh, soils map of Spain, general soil map, and also had worked much on uh, rapid chemical analysis of soil. So his lectures were very stimulating, so I, I decided in my mind that I could um, uh, later be a soil scientist. But I st still had to had to wait for another for another three years before I finished. I got my degree in 1969 to to start with the, with soil science. Okay, um, could you tell us something about your education as a soil science scientist before yes. coming to Cordoba? Yes, well, I finished. I finished my degree. I, I said in 1969, and then in 1970, the beginning of 1970, I got in touch with Professor uh, Carlo Roquero. He was at, the, at that time at the Polytechnic University of Valencia, and um, he was a man of. He had a, a great knowledge about the soils of Spain, and he had. A, a, he very. He was at the same time a very good agronomist, so who could. He could jump from soil properties to land use, which is a very difficult uh, question. As, as he said, this is a, the, the triple somersault. So it's, and he was very good at, 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 at uh, describing soils and analyzing soils and mapping soils, etc. So he, I was working with, with him on a, on, as a consultant on a consultant work, doing work on field work, uh, uh, soil surveying in several parts of Spain. And then um, later in, 19, uh, in 1970, I was working for the Institute of uh, Agronomic Research of uh, Spain, uh, doing soil mapping, soil mapping or soil survey in the province of Cáceres, which is a paradise for soil scientists. Uh, it has all types of soil. So I learned much just by being there, <laughs> being there for several months. Later, I had, uh, I, I, had uh, uh, I went to, to the University of Aberdeen because I got one of the scholarships given by the to, to the to one of the two scholarships given to uh, Spanish students by the Stevenson Exchange, Exchange Scholarship Institution. So I went there to the to the university uh, to the Department of Soil Science and under and carried out a, and, and got a master's uh, a master's uh, degree, Master of Soil Science. Under the supervision of, of Professor of Doctor uh, Ewer Fitzpatrick, Fitz as we call him, and he was uh, widely known by his contributions to the to soil morphology, etc., etc. So I was um, there until the end of 1971, and I I finished a master's thesis on uh, on the genesis of a soil uh, in near near Madrid in Spain. So I learned much about uh, soil morphology. And, and the principles of soil genesis. I enjoy being there with Fitz because discussions were endless. So it was a very, very stimulating period. Uh, coming back to Madrid, I, I, at the, I, I was doing some consultant work in, in different parts of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Spain and Algeria. And then and at, the, at the end, at the October 1972, I got um, uh, I was um, I had a contract as uh, lab assistant and uh, part-time reader in the in the School of Agriculture of Madrid in the, in the school I I got studied. Um, uh, then uh, I I continued my research on uh, on soil genesis and uh, and 
at, and 19, in April 1975, I, I finished my PhD. I, I defended my PhD, which dealt with the genesis of a soils of a river terrans uh, sequence in, in northern Spain. So, uh, not, 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 not uh, later than finishing my, my, my PhD thesis, I went, uh, I went to the United States to the, to the uh, more precisely, on, on the Soil Survey Investigations Unit of the National Resources Conservation Center of the Department of Agriculture at Riverside in California. And, w and then I was under the supervision of, in, with uh, Dr. Wiley Dennis Nettleton. And I was working on different topics um, on the genesis of soils with duripan in, in, uh, in California, uh, the genesis of soils with clay lamelle also in California, and some um, more theoretical exercise on the, the, on the feedback or the influence of uh, s feedback uh, processes in soil, in soil genesis. Uh, I, um, I then, at the, at the end of uh, 1970, um, I, I came back to I came back to, to Spain, and then uh, I got a position as associate uh, as associate professor in the University of Cordoba. Yeah. This is your next question. Yes. What did uh, you do? What did you? <laughs> well, uh, did after you those, all those experiences around the world, you came to Cordoba in 1977. Yes. Uh, so tell us about your career as a soil scientist here, um, in particular, which have been your specialization subjects science yes. then? Well, I was, I, I, I was. Um, most of, most of my work was, uh, had been done on soil genesis, and uh, in particular soil genesis of uh, soils of the Mediterranean area. So when I, when I came to Cordoba, of course I started uh, lecturing, uh, preparing, recruiting uh, students, uh, and, and then I continued for some time with, with the study of soil genesis studies on Mediterranean soils. Then, by 1978, not not not, uh, not about yeah, 1978, I started uh, working on uh, on iron oxides. Uh, why why? Because iron oxides are the things that you see when you you look at soils of Mediterranean areas. You see all those bright colors, all those vivid red colors, and uh, due to hematite, one of the, one of the iron oxides. So, I was interested in what color men and uh, what uh, happened with iron oxides uh, uh, when the soils develop, uh, uh, soils form and develop. So, um, of course, at that, that time, the, the reference center or the reference place to study iron oxides was the Department of Soil Science at the, at the Technical University of Munich. Uh, the, the director was Professor Udo Schwermann, who was a reference person mm. for for investigation, for research on, 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 on iron sites. So I went there in 1978, in the autumn of 1978, and I studied um, the iron sites, the, the, the formation and the, the characteristics and the importance of iron sites in, in a sequence of river terraces, two sequences of river terraces, soils of two sequences of river terraces in, in, in Spain. Um, the, the, my, um, our work was published in, uh, later in, in Geoderma in 1980, and uh, with, together with Udo Schwermann and Darrell Schulze, who is, who is now at the Purdue University. And um, it was the first time that uh, differential electric diffraction that Darrell Schulze had developed was, was, was used for, to characterize iron oxides and other soil minerals. And it was, um, we, we found interesting uh, differences between hematite and, uh, and getite as for aluminum substitution and for, for um, uh, of course, color and for um, uh, solubility, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, it, was, it was a rather interesting, uh, a rather interesting work and, um, well, I, I, it's one of the my, my, my favorite ones. 
Uh, then, uh, while, you while you work with iron oxides, there is one thing that, uh, that happens. It's, it's like picking a cherry from a basket full of them. You try to take one and then you take three or four, <laughs> right? So, when you start with iron oxides, then you, you wonder about what happens with color, what happens with formation and different conditions, what happens with many things, many different questions. So, uh, um, I just started um, uh, to study the, the relationship between so iron, soil color and iron oxides. So, we carried some studies. Uh, we started in Cordoba to, to, to study the, um, the, uh, the, the formation of iron oxides in, in different conditions, under different conditions, environmental conditions. We uh, start with um, the effect on the, of iron oxides on the um, aggregation, the effect of iron oxides on phosphate adsorption, etc., etc. So, um, the, the, the study of uh, soil color in relation to iron oxides was one of the, one of the main topics uh, why we, we focus. And um, uh, later, um, we, we were use systematically using uh, uh, diffuse reflectance spectroscopy to uh, study the mm. relationship, this relationship. And in 1986, uh, with uh, my, what my now colleague, um, Vidal Perón, that was, she was then a, a PhD student, we published a paper on the, the use of um, the q belka moon theory on the, on, the, on, the, on the study of the relationship between iron oxides and color. We published and then other, other papers on how the, the environment uh, controlled the formation of hematite and or getite from ferric hydride, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, having worked on with iron oxides, one of the one of the uh, um, results was that uh, if, we, if you are in the school of agriculture, you wonder what happens with uh, the absorption of phosphate by iron oxides. This is an important question. So we 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 deal with this this problem with the absorption of iron oxides of phosphate by iron oxides uh, by pure minerals, pure iron oxides by soils, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We ended up some years later with with uh, some with some pedotransfer functions which, uh, which, are, which can be easily used to, to predict the absorption of phosphate by, by iron oxides. Um, once you work with iron oxides and phosphate absorption in soil, phosphate dynamics in soil, you, if you are in the Mediterranean area, you wonder if there are other components that have an influence of, of phosphate absorption, yeah. phosphate dynamics, and of course calcite uh, carbonates are, are important. So we started then studying the relationship between uh, phosphate absorption, phosphate dynamics, and the different typical minerals of Mediterranean soils, iron oxides plus calcite plus silicate clays, etc., etc. So we were we dedicated to this uh, rather long, long time. Um, also, uh, one of the important things about uh, the interaction between phosphate and iron oxides is that that phosphate influences the formation of iron oxides from ferric hydride and not others. So we, we did some work also on the, uh, the influence of phosphate on the formation of hematite against getite um, uh, and how phosphate uh, uh, was, uh, how the phosphate ion could uh, uh, be a structural, could be structural phosphorus in, 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 in hematite, for instance. Um, working with, with, with uh, phosphate and iron oxides, uh, a serendipitous, uh, <laughs> a serendipitous <laughs> question <laughs> happened Why? at one time, because with Alvaron and I was playing with phosphate and the, 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 the evolution of uh, formation of iron oxides from ferric hydride. And, and then we found that uh, one day that the, the, the first product from the transformation of ferric hydride uh, in the presence of phosphate was a magnetic, a was highly magnetic. We call it hydromachimite because it was similar to mineral machimite. And then we start working with it and trying to characterize it and, uh, and finally uh, publish a paper published a few years ago in, in 2010 that describes all the properties and characteristics of, of this uh, hydromachimite. The pathway that we, we propose from ferric hydride to hydromachimite to hematite 
uh, it has been used to explain the, 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 the magnetic and, and, and magnetic properties and the relation of these magnetic properties with the different ion oxides in terms of uh, 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 paleo, paleo um, climatic conditions. Uh, we, in this context, we had, uh, we've had for many years uh, 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 a very good relationship with uh, Chinese uh, geophysicists, particularly Professor Ching Song uh, of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and um, with very interesting results. I mean, so our pathway, our proposed pathway, seems to explain in the, in the paleoclimatic conditions, as I said, such as paleo temperature, paleo rainfall, etc. So it has, a, a, we think, a, a good uh, paleoenvironmental uh, significance. Well, that's, these are some of the things we have been working on. But, uh, I can see that. I, well, it's uh, difficult to explain everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I can minutes. see that after 40 years working on this, uh, there are still very exciting topics for you. Yes, uh, <laughs> still topics. Well, I'm retired now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm retired, but uh, I, and particularly for my collaborators and for, yeah. for, for all the people whom I work with. Uh, in your career as a soil scientist, uh, which were your most influential teacher? Well, uh, some, Professor Carlos Roquero, yeah. as I said, he was the man who knew everything about Spanish mm. soils. Uh, Fitz, uh, uh, Dr. Fitzpatrick, who was excellent at discussing and, and, and studying and, and proposing many hypotheses for uh, only one fact, so it was <laughs> excellent. And of course, uh, Professor Sberman was an authority. He was, he was a man of uh, 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 very elegant uh, tackling of the scientific, uh, scientific problems, and he was excellent as a, as a, as a teacher. And also uh, Dennis Nettleton. He was a very rigorous man in presenting data, in analyzing data, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So learned a lot from them. Yeah. Um, could you tell us about your teaching or activities, uh, administration activities here in? Yeah, in well, in Cordoba, I have um, well uh, taught uh, soil uh, soil science and well already subjects for for well, more more than forty years. More than, more than 40, 40 years now. Uh, and well, I, I, I've had excellent students, so yeah. that helped me much in my, in, my, in my duties, in my teaching duties. And, um, uh, and some, some of the, my, my students are, are, are now my, my teachers. So I may mention Vidal Barron, who the professor of science, and Vidal Barron, Maria Carmen del Campillo, Antonio Delgado, who is in uh, Sevilla. So they are teaching me now many things. So then that's good because uh, maybe I taught them good, uh, good things. So <laughs> of course, I've been also in administration duties. Yeah. I was vice, uh, vice director for, for research in the, school of, uh, in the School of Agriculture for some years. At the beginning, I was also head of the Department of Soil Science. Uh, I've been in the I've been uh, vice president of the of the Spanish Society of Soil Science for, for when Felipe Macias was the was the president. So I have been in in a number of administrative uh, duties. I'm not a very good administrator. Why no. not? <laughs> uh, which are your major achievements as a soil science professor and scientist? Well, I think my 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 major achievement is to have interested and, and people in studying soil science, in doing research in soil science, and I mean convincing people that soil science is important. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think this is a major, major achievement. In, in, in terms of numbers, of course, uh, I've published uh, about 200 uh, scientific uh, refereed papers. Um, uh, I think it's 14, uh, 14 uh, books, books or book chapters. And, um, and of course, I, I, I have some preferences, in, in, but uh, for a father, all children are the same, so it's very difficult to, to say which are my best articles. Probably I would, verticals or works, probably I would mention some um, uh, chapters, uh, book chapters on methods of soil analysis for um, diffuse reflectance spectroscopy methods of soil analysis. That paper I mentioned that, that one produced when I was in, in Germany, in, in, 
in Munich, in Freising. And also um, some strange papers, one that dealt with, with, uh, with the proposed evolution of uh, iron oxides on the surface of Mars. Uh, also transformation of gerocyte, uh, simulated transformation of gerocyte to hematite in a, in a simulated Martian brine. So these, these papers on Mars are very attractive. Not, yeah. <laughs> not better than others, but very attractive. And a few years ago, I know that you also received one of the greatest awards in the field of soil science, the Philippe Duchof Duchofour medal. medal. Yes. Uh, well, what does it mean that award for a soil science? Well, that that was that was uh, I, I was very very honored to 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 receive this this award. Uh, first of all, because uh, this award had been received by people whom I admire. Uh, <laughs> It was Fitzpatrick and uh, Udo Spearman. So. Secondly, because it was a recognition of the work, not mine, but of all the people I work with. And uh, thirdly, because uh, it paid attention, uh, it conveyed the attention of people to the importance of iron oxides and, and phosphates and uh, phosphorus in, in cycles in, in, in soil. So that's, that was satisfaction okay. for me, yes. Uh, nowadays, how do you see the future of soil science and its research? There are the, I mean, the, uh, the, the, the amount of research and the amount of, uh, of papers and published in soil science is, has, has increased exponentially since I began working on this, on this, on this uh, field. But uh, uh, on the other hand, um, the, some of the knowledge seems to be far from what we, we need in terms of, uh, of um, of preserving soils and having a, having a, 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 the, a global view of the important soils in nature, but I'm, I am I am I am optimistic about the future yeah. of soil science in terms in terms of research. Uh, maybe not so much in terms of what will happen with soils yeah. in the future. <laughs> um, well, we are finishing the the interview, so finally. I would like to you tell us a scientific desire for the field of the soil science. <laughs> difficult. Well, my idea is, well, my desire is that uh, we, we soil scientists uh, find the holy grail of uh, preserving and, and uh, the, the integrity and quality of soils in, while serving or while, while meeting the, the, the demands of uh, the demands of humankind. So it's, yeah. I mean, well, that's a global, <laughs> global yeah. design. Well, uh, that's all. Thank you to you, Cedarin. Yes, I'm a, I'm a great talker. So um. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs>